All she wants to do is give him kisses. He's so sweet, pumpkin. I give Charlie kisses. He wasn't very receptive. Hey, what's up, garden friends? If here, how's everybody doing? Wow, nobody wants to hold still. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm great. Doing more cleaning, like spring type chores out here. Got a bunch of these are all Tucker's rugs. They used to have in the kitchen. I need to get these laid out and spread out and get them cleaned up so I can put them inside. This time of year, everything I'm doing outside is mostly cleaning. I mean, that's, I mean, you could, there's plenty of that to be done. I don't think that comes as a surprise to anybody. I've made a lot of progress. I'm not really vlogging any cleaning. That seems kind of boring, but I do want to take the pool cover off, which I don't know if I should. I've done it before. Wasn't that easy, but it's something I hadn't had any practice at. The more time I have out here, the more I would just like to not be looking at this. I would rather, even though the waters are gonna be green and kind of icky for a few weeks, I don't care. I'd rather look at that than this pool cover. And it's so nice to have that sound of water out here too. Like just that nice background noise. The birds have been so vocal over these last few days. The spring is really rolling in. It's just been so nice and tranquil out here, but then I look around and I'm like, ugh, I don't look at that. So I'm not gonna walk you through it because this isn't gonna be a tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. I just know that I, there's a bar that you use to get these springs off and you have to, the hardest part for me is getting it like pulled back and then folded up. The springs off of there, that's not a big deal. Maybe there will be a before and after or maybe I'll give up and we'll move on to something else. I don't know, we'll see. Well, that wasn't too hard updating from my phone because my mic pack and stuff, I don't want all that on me what messing with things with water, but here, I don't, what, what do I do now? I spent a while with the pool brush sweeping the debris off the cover and then there was a gust of wind and so that was just a gigantic waste of time. Didn't need to do that. That's not true. It needed to be done. It's just now the question is, do I pull it off that way? Do I bring it down this way? I don't know. I watch some like tutorials online and they usually take it that way, but that's on rectangular pools and this is like a... I don't know how you would describe the shape of lagoon. I think that's actually what it was called. It was a lagoon, I don't know. Getting those springs off is actually kind of fun though. There's this tool here. It's a metal pole that has a, like a divot in there. And where the springs are on the ground where they connect to this grommet, you just stick this in and you twist it and the spring pops up. It's very satisfying. I enjoyed that part. I don't know. I'm gonna figure it out. Can I help? Okay, now you're gonna leave. Way to get up in my space, Toby. I was just sitting here and he just did the thing. Look, the pool's opened. Hey. It's not actually opened. The plumbing and stuff isn't up and running yet. I really don't know how to do that. The cover, now I watched some videos, you just do the thing. I showed you, pull it back, got it folded up. But as far as like getting the machinery going, I don't, I don't think I'm going to try and do that. Those like pumps and everything. They're pretty pricey. I feel like I would just break it. Before right now, this will do. And I'm fine with it. It just looks much better than the cover. And I have a fountain up in my attic, or it's a pump that I stack on top of milk crates to put out in the middle that puts like a big geyser of water up, which is nice to listen to. So that's one of the reasons I do it. But it's also because the grackle birds, which they, they've just shown back up. It's the first time I've seen them. They're back today. They're little black birds with a blue head. If you're new to this channel, you're gonna hear me complain about them all season. I love birds, I love wildlife. Not a fan of them because they're jerks. They're buttheads. They throw their poop at me and all over the place and they raid the nest of the song. I'm just, I'm not a fan. We don't get along well, right buddy? Right buddy? Yeah, you're kind of wet. You're kind of wet. You jumped in that pool. He got in that water. Like as soon as that cover was off, he was in there. And I don't know how because that water, I think it's like 42 degrees, something like that. He didn't seem to mind though. He dries off fast too, especially considering, I don't know what he is, but Toby's a lab. Where's Toby? There's Toby back there. Yeah, it takes Toby like a good 10 hours to dry off when he gets wet. Cause you're a weirdo, aren't you Toby? He bud, he bud, yeah, he's such a good boy, buddy. So uh, I think what I will do next, there's a few different things I'm thinking about doing this week. One is that I need to get out of the house. It's been nearly two months. I've gone out and driven around but I haven't actually gone anywhere and I need plumber's tape because the water line that goes to the gray hose right there, it's leaking all over the place and I'm, I'm out. I had a little bit, but just not quite enough. So I might pop into Lowe's as long as the parking lot's basically empty. I'm not gonna go in there if it's crowded. And uh, my, one of my favorite nurseries opened up today too. So I'd like to pop in and see what they have, again, assuming that they aren't really crowded. I'm trying to stay safe here. But first, I'm gonna hop up in the attic and find that pump in the milk crate so I can get that water moving. I didn't finish that thought, did I? 
Okay, the grackle birds. They're water birds. They like to hang around big bodies of water, swampy areas, and they uh, drop their little poop bags in the water, which is smart, very hygienic, that they don't just leave it in their nest. That's fine, whatever. I don't really want it in the pool. I'm not going to be swimming in this anytime soon, though, because it's very cold. The point there, though, is that having that big thing of water shooting up makes it harder for them to swoop down and drop their little poop bags in the water. They don't seem to like the pool area as much when there's that loud moving water around. Doesn't solve the problem completely, but it helps. And I don't like, just to be clear, I don't hate them. I don't know where they went. They were just here a few minutes ago. It's nature, so I will love them and respect them, <laughs> but that doesn't mean I have to like them. Not a fan. Just, they cause some problems, but it's okay. That's all right. We're all here together on this planet. We should be one with each other and all that stuff. Here's the pump. One up in the attic. This is 20,000 liters an hour. I don't know what that means for gallons. All I do know is that I got it for super cheap off of Amazon a long time ago, like maybe five, six, probably even longer than that, many years ago. Before I even bother trying to get it set up down there on some milk crates, thought it'd be a smart idea to just plug it in, make sure it actually works, because like I said, it's gotten pretty old. I've had this for a long time. It works. It took a little while, but I got it going. I didn't remember until just now that there are some outlets need to be changed out here. If you remember last year I was having a lot of problems with the electricity and then I learned that apparently just like every so often you have to change out your GFCIs so that one's bad. The one that's over here by the water spigot's bad but this one's good. I think this one got changed out last summer I believe. So found some power, got it running. I also have this big yellow cord that actually goes to one of the heaters in the garage for the grow space but I've cut back the heaters. I only have one running right now because it was, the thermostats on them weren't working. It got up to like 94 degrees in there. My alarm started going off that goes to my phone. I was like, what is going on? Just kept getting hotter and hotter and hotter and I kept resetting the thermostats to kick the heaters off. Wasn't working. So I went ahead and just unplugged all of them except for one. I'd rather it be more on the chilly side in there than to cook things. Cause they didn't appreciate it getting that hot in there. Has this been a fun angle? Looking at this, my sighting? Probably not. <sighs> That's nice. Love the sound of the water. Might be a little bit obnoxious for you. I'm not sure. I'll stand back a little bit. So what I'll do here when there's more water in the pool is I'll put a couple milk crates in there that I zip tie together and put that on top and it'll create a big you know, a, a fountain. Just something to make noise and help keep the birds from swooping out and pooping in the water. And it'll just be nice. It'll just be so nice to have the sound of water out here. I'm already loving it so much more. That was fun. Glad to have that up and going. Look at look at the ripples in the water. There's some leaves, but not that bad. Usually this is like green or brown when it gets opened up, but there have been a few years so far where the water's been nice and clear. This is good. There's lots of stuff floating around there, but I can just scoop that out with a net. That's no big deal. I'm just happy it's not sludgy and nasty, but I'm not gonna get too excited about that because we usually have some storms in the springtime that wash everything from the neighbor's houses down across here. And you've probably seen it before if you've been on the channel for a few years. At some point in the year, this tends to turn into like a milkshake looking thing, which is fine. I don't care. It's easy to clean up. Happy to be here at this point in such beautiful weather. Okay, now I wanna get out. Let's go. We'll get some plumber's tape, see? Maybe they have some fun stuff at the hardware store. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna be quick in and out, so we'll see how much vlogging gets done while I'm there. Oh, I've missed you so much, my baby Lowe's. How you been? You may not be able to hear anything I'm saying. I've got the double, can you see me? Yeah, with the, the double mask. Such, hello, hi, how's everybody doing? What they're telling us all to do, I've just spent $2 putting air in the car, which whole different spiel I'm not even gonna go into but the thing just already went back on and I checked the tire pressure and they're all okay I don't know what's going on there I don't care I just want to go inside and see some plants I forget my hand sanitizer I don't know how this is gonna work out because I feel like the audio is probably absolutely horrible but yeah we'll see okay I don't I don't think I can film in here this music's really loud look at all the seeds though lots of seeds Tons of them, pretty much the same amount they have every year, but there's, I'm not seeing the signs of that seed shortage people are talking about. Hey look, even more, they have the packs. These are fun, I think these are resealable too, which is nice, I wish everybody would do that. Plants are looking good. Look, there's some nice coloration on this Majesty Palm, so you get that nice pop. you just kidding, that's the clearance section. The rest of the plants, they look pretty good. Pretty typical selection, Cordelins, Dracaenas, Diefenbachias. Not seen anything that stands out. I always love looking at the bromeliads. Even though they're usually pretty small and don't have a ton of color on them, they're still, they're just so stinking cute. 
Oh my god. Those birds of paradise are so tiny. The pots there are not tiny. How much are these? How are we ripping people off this year? $14.98? my <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, these usually would have been like at least, I would say, two and a half to three foot tall. And <laughs> hey, at least they're cute. Dracaenas, Dracaenas, palms, little succulents over there, a whole bunch of spring stuff sitting inside waiting to go out. We have the ready fills, those are $19.98 for the. Eh. There's some beautiful home decor house plan. Look at that. Pepperomia. Okay, the Jubilee Ivy though, that's stunning. I haven't seen these with the assorted plants in a long time. Nice little obtusifolias. Oh, apparently we're still doing that. Still doing this, still painting the plants so they can go home and die. That's nice. Ooh, that's a cute pansy. There's just like one of them in the whole assortment. They have some nice Dracaenas, but $26.99. Can you see that? That is insane. These used to be like 12 to $15 tops. Good selection of pots. Look at this one. That's cute. I like this. It has a nice texture to it. A good squat, shallow container. Could do a lot with that. New furniture, pillows. Looks good. Those are different. I don't hate them. Oh, I wouldn't say if I did because that might bother someone who does like it. So I try to not say when I dislike anything too heavily. Okay, these are fun. Look at that texture, that pattern. Those are neat. And these over here, I like these two, they're very, very lightweight, like extremely lightweight. Look at the ripples and the texture on this. That is such a nice, like nautical, beachy, coastal vibe. It reminds me of how the sand, like the way it ripples when water moves across. Oh no, I think I might have to get one. This is where they look different. These two don't look different. This one back here. Is that just the lighting? If I can reach that. Now that definitely is different. It's more like splotchy and bumpy. Or I don't want to have to make a decision here. I just stick with the original plan. That would be better. Okay. I like these two. These are satisfying. Nice fun pattern. Also nice lightweight. It's not a bad price. It's a good size pot for 24 bucks, 25 bucks. Hey, that's pretty cool and a great price too. This is $49.99 for this huge barrel. It's only 35 gallons, so it's pretty shallow, but it's nice and wide. You could do a lot with this, get bricks around it and leave it raised, put it in the ground and it's wide enough that you could actually have a nice fountain on it. And usually these things are more like these barrels where you can't really do much as far as a water feature. But you can get a nice bell in there, one of those domes that would look really cool. Or you could even use this as a basin. Bury it, put your pump in there, and put screen over it with some rocks and have a false bottom to a fountain that's in the garden. It's a pretty good price for that. More pots with fun texture. I feel like I've seen these before. And maybe even the ones inside, I may have seen those too. I like these deck boxes. They're a really good size. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell on camera, but nice and tall. Pretty wide, the price isn't too bad, and they're lightweight. Well, this was fun, but needed to go to my favorite nursery. I'm here at Greenscape. Okay, so you may remember from my plant tour, the house tour, how my papaya was looking all sad. Apparently, that's pretty normal. They, these are here in a greenhouse under all kinds of light. They look the same. So that's good to know. Easy to overwinter. I didn't really know that. I'd never tried before. The uh, music was a little bit too loud on there to film, and I was in and out fairly quickly, but as always, Beautiful house plants, gorgeous anthurium. The pottery on point, absolutely beautiful pottery. These ones with the roses on them, they had those in a few different colors and those were really neat and unique. It wasn't in there for too terribly long, so there's not a lot to show, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Hey, Pumpkin, how you doing? Do you miss me? I missed you so much, Pumpkin. Yeah, now I miss you too, Toby. Good boy, Toby. Did you finish your breakfast? I mean, your dinner? Dogs are just finishing up their dinner. I am home. It's getting kind of dark out. I'm gonna show you the plants I got. Maybe that should wait till tomorrow. This is, you can't see anything. That water might be really loud through the mic. I apologize. Starting to get dark out, but here's what I picked up from the nursery. I didn't, all I got from Lowe's was just some cleaning stuff, some plumber's tape and a little fern. I didn't get anything very exciting at Lowe's. I was at Greenscape, I got a whole bunch of Alyssum, Lobularia, that there should be a video out on all that by now. So probably have seen, well really probably have seen all of this. This will probably be my background. I got a couple of Gerber Tazies, look at them. Aren't they beautiful? See how that white glows in the light at nighttime? It's so pretty. 
and there's two. I just, I knocked one off the table. I need to grab it. I also got a few of these smaller daffodils. That's the name right there. Not gonna try and pronounce it. Tete, tete. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's what that is. They're small and they're cute and they're adorable. I tried to pick ones out that still had a whole bunch of buds left in them so that there's still some time to get to enjoy them. This one right here. This one still has a lot of buds down in it. Creeping Jenny, of course, always one of my go-tos because it just grows so wonderfully and it's so affordable, easy to find, and it's versatile. It's great for the cooler weather that we're having in the springtime and it'll be nice in the summer and, you know, all those great things. Some pansies. I don't know, do these have a label? What's their mix? Matrix Morpheus, that's a pretty classic pansy, the purple and the yellow. This is Matrix Midnight Glow. Look at Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. Those flowers, they almost look like they've been painted on there. Love pansies. They're so happy and cheery. This is Matrix White Blotch. Blotch. <laughs> Matrix White Blotch has a white flower with some purple in there and a yellow center. These are violas and they are so stinking precious. Aren't those cute? What did that say? Sorbet mix. Halo. Sorbet pink halo. So stinking adorable. I definitely see more purple than pink, but there is some pink in there on some of them. So maybe they age out into a pink or they start off with a pink and then go into a purple. I'm not really sure, but they're cute. And then this six pack is, it's a mix, a matrix mix. I really just got this because I liked these yellows that were in here. They're a really nice, soft. That one's a little bit more vibrant, but it was really <laughs> this particular pansy right here. It's a soft yellow. There's another one in there. I just kind of enjoyed the color. I intentionally picked out a six pack that was mostly yellow, particularly that softer kind of light yellow that's right there. And these are Algerian ivies. They have nice big foliage. They'll be staying in containers. I won't be putting those in the ground because, you know, ivy. I was about to say that's everything, but I did get a hanging basket of just assorted pansies while I was at Lowe's because I was like, well, I can divide it up in hindsight. Probably didn't need to. I think there's more than enough pansies here, at least for what I have planned for the next few weeks. So I'm happy. Lots of good stuff. Lots of fun, happy, cheery spring plants. I'm ready to get going on spring containers. Like now, I want to do it now. Probably wait though, because it is starting to get dark. Probably should have waited till morning to show you the plants anyways. We'll be back in the morning, you'll see them. And they were in the background of the Lobularia video. If you've already seen them, I don't know. All right, here's a daytime view of everything, just in case the video from last night wasn't the best looking. I'm not gonna go over everything again, but I did notice that these, they look a little bit different during the daytime. You can see how they have lighter shades. The darkness kind of highlighted the purples in them, but they're cute, very adorable. Everything else looks pretty much the same. I have some seeds that I need to get started, and this is a good time for it too, because it's pretty chilly. It's like 36 degrees this morning, which I'm not a huge fan of, but that's okay. That's normal for this time of year. 30s, 40s, and 50s are what's typical around here for this time of year. It's not a big deal. I'm behind on getting some of my seeds going, particularly my poppies. I have a lot of poppies. I've talked about them before. I They're really hit or miss here. If things get really hot and humid earlier into the spring, usually Usually things are pretty mild up until like mid-May, but you just never know. I mean, we had highs close to 90 late March last year. So anyways, the poppies, they don't always appreciate that hot, humid weather. So it's important to get them going early. Typically, I just scatter my poppy seeds. I wish I hadn't done that. Just set those back down. Typically, I just sprinkle them, scatter them, and I'll do that in like January. So they have a nice long cold period on top of some snow. And that's when I have the best success with them. Whenever I try and start them in cells in the house, it never goes very well. So I need to get those going. And I am just going to, basically, I mix them together into an assortment. So I just have the regular florist poppies or opium poppies right there. That's what these all are. They're all different salmonid from. So there's the Hungarian bread seed, which is basically the same thing as the floral poppy. This one is Lauren's grape, which has a nice pretty purple flower on it, really open and airy. These are the hens and chicks, which are pretty cool. They get like, uh, well, you'll see the picture, but they have these fun little offshoots around the base of the spent flower. And while well, they're still flowering, this one right here is called the giant, which I mean, you get it, right? Gets big, pretty flowers. I have two of those. Then I found these with my seeds from 2016. They're a California Thai silk mix, and uh, I have never had great luck getting these going, but 
why not? I'll give them a try. Basically gonna be the case with all these. And then Pepper Box. See those pretty flowers? I love the Pepper Box. They're a really nice pink color with the, I mean, you can see it, right? Purple and white and the fun yellow centers. Just fun. I absolutely love poppies. What I am going to do with these is get those packets popped open and pour a little bit into this pouch. And then I'm gonna wet the area down where they go and just scatter them. I don't know, do you guys wanna see that? I feel like that might be kind of boring. I need to get that done because I'm gonna send out all my extra seeds to other plant people because I don't, but this is overkill. I really overdid it this year. Don't need this many. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned this one right here, the giant, it's a double flowered, which are usually called peony type poppies. I don't normally go for those, but this one gets nice and tall and I just, it seemed appealing. So I went for it. And I had got all the seeds put in here, mixed them up, fun colors. It might be bothersome to some people that I'm just blending them together instead of arranging them by height, but the height isn't that different with them. And with poppies, I really enjoy kind of the wild nature of them when you have them scattered about and mixed up. That's just, that's what's appealing to me. So that's how I like to do it. Since I'm late to the game with this, I'm going to divide these up into thirds. I'm going to reserve one of those thirds for next year in case these are all duds, because that could happen. They need a cold period and I don't know if they're going to get it. Really like a minimum of two weeks of cold stratification should be fine. I don't know if they're going to get that this year. That's why I want to put a third to the side, just to be safe. And with another third, I'm going to just lightly loosen the soil where they're going. I'm going to take a watering can and get that area kind of damp, and then I'll sprinkle that on. And uh, I don't usually cover them, so I probably won't. But if I wanted to, I could put, to, I think the packet says a 16th of an inch, just a teeny tiny amount of soil on top to help keep them from washing away. But but it's just such a small amount of soil that I feel like I'll overdo it and kill them. Then the other third I'm going to put into a Ziploc bag with some garden soil, put that in the refrigerator or in the freezer perhaps for about two and a half to three weeks. And then when that two or three weeks is up, I can just take that soil that's in there and scatter that where I want them to go. And here's that beautiful area where I scattered the poppy seeds. This is sort of a wild area where I pretty much just have things out here for the pollinators and the rabbits. Like there's some wild strawberries and things that grow through here, but you can see still looking pretty shabby because it's that time of year. looks like there's, what is that? A crocosmia maybe coming up? Cosmia, however you pronounce it. I don't actually remember what that is. I have no idea. So what I did here, there was no reason to film it because you can't, the seeds are so tiny, you can't see it. But I just scattered them through. It lightly watered the area first so that the soil would be nice and moist. And then I sprinkled them about and then just came through and very lightly just sort of ruffled the surface of the area that the seeds are in. I find that a safer way to get those seeds slightly covered. Otherwise, I end up putting too much soil on top. This entire front area here is a really nice, well-drained, pretty sandy soil that doesn't hold on to moisture for too long. I do have moisture loving plants planted in here, but they have drippers that go to them to keep them hydrated. In the front, there's some of the native Asclepias and some other things that really prefer that nice well-drained soil that isn't going to hold on to too much moisture. The area gets a good amount of sun. It's like kind of like right on the, eh, we'll see for the poppies. It used to get a lot of sun. It doesn't get as much anymore as the trees have grown, but that's okay. Why well, I'm setting some aside and I have the ones in the freezer and we'll just see what happens. I don't have very high hopes because I waited too long. There's the pond. You guys haven't seen that in a while. Looks great, doesn't it? And, and you might, okay. Well, there were fish there. And that is a huge relief because this entire thing frozen to an ice cube. I had the pumps going. I had the defroster. I even went ahead and threw an aquarium heater in there, but it's just, it's just, there was no way that with multiple days below zero Fahrenheit that this was going to stay unfrozen, stay liquid. It was around day three or four of those freezing temperatures that this entire thing turned into an ice cube. It was frozen solid from what I could tell all the way through. The plants, I had pushed them down so they were on the bottom, but that didn't matter when this entire thing's above ground. I lifted them up. They're okay. Water lollies are so good. Creeping Jenny's still doing its thing. I need to cut the cattail back. And next year I will wrap this with some foam insulation and probably put something over it just to be, so I've never had to worry about that kind of cold before. Not for more, like it'll drop that cold for a day maybe two days, but then it warms right back up. My warms back up and it gets into like the 20s or 30s or 40s. 20s, 30s and 40s though are still a huge improvement over two and a half weeks around like minus five to 10 degrees. That wasn't fun. Still though, in spite of all that, things are looking okay. <laughs> I love these sitting out in the sun only for like a minute. That's it. But still not a good idea when I'm trying to cold stratify them 
I'm gonna go put these in the freezer. You know you're a gardener when you're willing to put dirt in your freezer. Oh, I forgot I have these buried treasure strawberry seeds in here. That's okay, they've only been in there for a few weeks. They'll be fine. Get back to those in a few weeks. Okay, that's enough of all the poppy talk, except I did want to mention if you live someplace hot and you like poppies, the oriental poppies and California poppies, the way to go. I just like the somniferums because they have a really great texture to them. It's just what appeals to me the most, but sometimes they can be challenging. It just sort of depends on what our climate's going to be like. Every year is a little bit different. I never know what's going to happen. And there's a good dupe to the Anathera, what is it, speciosa? which is a type of primrose. I've grown them before. They're fantastic. They're perennial. They're native across a lot of the U.S. I'd like to get my hands on some of those actually this year because I miss having those in my garden. So I might give those a shot as well. I think the only thing left that I have that I need to get going and should have gotten going quite a while ago are the artichokes. I have a lot of artichokes here. The Imperial Star, Green Globe. Uh, there's no pictures on here, so I don't know if anybody really cares. Violet, Colorado Star, and the Tavor. Tavor? Tavor? I'm not sure. They're all varieties that are more likely to put out fruit their first year but it's not guaranteed. It's best to get them started, or if you want them to go in your first year and you live in a zone six or a zone five, to get them started early enough so that you can put them outside and expose them to a few weeks of cold, like temperatures below 50, I believe, for a few weeks, and they need to be started and have some mature leaves on them before you do that. And um, well, I think it's too late for me to go ahead and do that, but that's okay. I don't really care that much about the fruit on artichokes, I really just like their form. They have great shape, similar to an acanthus. And the reason I got so many is because I have an area down where we just wore that hilly area where I just wanted to sort of see what would do best and go from there. I've grown the green globes before. They're pretty reliable. And the imperial star, the others, I haven't tried before, but I think I'm gonna hold off on getting those going because it's pretty chilly out here. I just don't really feel like messing with it right now. Only other thing that's happened out here this week was that I took all the plants that you guys saw in last weekend's vlog, the ones that I had just moved out, and I kind of arranged them over here. I just want it to look somewhat nicer. It's still a mess. I have the fountains I need to clean up, some annuals and things that need to be tossed up. It's just a little bit more tidy. It's nice having everything together. The rosemary still looks good. I saw that video. I wasn't positive how it was going to do it. Sometimes the green that gets left on them just takes a little bit longer to come off after that kind of cold, but still looking all right. I mean, obviously it's not looking great over here. I'll cut all that off in a couple more weeks when I'm sure that we're further away from having the really cold winds that are going to be blowing on there, the cold dry wind. I think next week I'm going to come in here with some fertilizer, some slow release for the acid loving plants, the azaleas and the magnolia, well really, I think almost everything over here except for the yuccas, they're going to want some of that fertilizer for the, I usually use holly tone, and that's pretty much all I do is just a little scatter on the azaleas, magnolias, akubas, the fetsias. That way those can get going for the season. Oh, my hand smells so good now, and that's it. Uh, there wasn't a ton to do this week because I didn't really have time getting this done was nice, didn't take that long, but just felt like a big achievement to get that going. I still need to get the fountain raised up, but I need to let the water come up a little bit higher before I do that. And I'll probably put this on a switch. Okay, airplane. Wow, all at once. Two dump trucks and like three airplanes. It's getting pretty noisy out here. Waiting for the water level to get up higher in here before I raise that fountain up. I didn't have to bring the water level up right now. I'm not getting in there anytime soon, but I wanted to make sure that if any wildlife falls in there that it can get out. And I thought if the water was too low that that could be a problem. So I wanted to make sure that it's up to that. I mean, you can see the line on the edge of the pool where that liner has faded over the years. So that's about where that needs to go just to be safe because I don't want anything to fall in here and drown. That would be horrible. I'd feel terrible if that happened. Yeah, this time of year, just sort of the waiting game. Gotta wait and see what the weather is going to do, but we're getting there. I am waiting still on some bulbs to come up. I planted some tulips and some hyacinths since last fall, but Wow, oh, that cold, that was pretty extreme. There's some in this bowl right here, and then I have some of some planters by the doorway, so I don't, we'll see what happens. Give that a couple more weeks. I dug down and they didn't feel squishy, so hopefully they're okay. I don't know. Oh, I almost forgot I need to reseal these and get those sent out. I have this adhesive thing here. It's sold with gift wrapping stuff, but it's nifty. You just take it and run it back across the top and it seals them back up. 
I enjoy that a lot. I'm gonna send out those poppies because like I said, I have way too many. And then those artichokes, I'm gonna divide those up. Because in no world do I need this many artichokes. This is over, I only need like, maybe I'd say six to 10 seeds of each to give them a shot because you know, you never know if they're all gonna grow for you. I'm sending these to Pam. It's Pamela, Pam's Pretty Plants here on YouTube. She is fantastic and she is a seed thug. She knows her stuff. She's really great with seeds. So I'm gonna send those to her. Some artichokes, some sweet peas. The only quantity I was able to get for the sweet peas was this giant bag of Prince of Orange. Don't need all of those. Um, purple bell vine. I have a ton of those. Send her some of those too. Need to get on top of that. Pam, if you're watching, sorry it took me so long to get these sent out. My bad. Yay weather. That's what it's all about this time of year is just constantly watching those forecasts. I'm down below. Say hi. Love talking to everybody. Makes me so happy to look outside and see green things. That mule palm. That one I left out to 13 degrees. So now I know to not do that again. The coldest they've ever gone was 15, 13. That's apparently where they draw the line been treated with fungicide, it'll be okay. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I was going to try and show some pumpkin, but I don't know where she is. She's wandered off having her afternoon cat nap, I think. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.